Okay, everybody, this is going to be a very short video. Um, what we're going to be learning is, it's actually a review from pre-algebra, but basically it's um, making sure that you guys know how to find the slope between two points. Um, you can do that either by graphing it and making a slope triangle or by using a formula. Um, and we're going to look at how to do both. It's a very, very short, only half page notes. Um, make sure you have those notes available. Um, and there's only three examples we're going to do, and then you're going to do some practice problems because this is review from pre-algebra. So first of all, the thing to remember is that when we talk about slope, we're talking about rise over run. Okay, And really what that means is, it, what rise means is how much does the graph go up? Well, that's the y-axis. So it's saying, how much does y change? Okay, Now the run is left to right, so what it's really asking is, how does x change? So how y changes and how x changes, that's what we want to look at. So does it go up 5 and then over 3? Well, that's going to be our slope. And we can look at that in two different ways. First of all, if we take this point right here and we want to find the slope between it, um, we're going to look first at the formula. And this one's already worked out for you. This example's already worked out for you on the uh, notes. So you can just kind of follow along on the video and make sure it makes sense. So first of all, slope is a fraction. We need to remember that. Okay, slope is always a fraction. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to look first at um, what we're going to do just as a rule of thumb is we're always going to take the second one minus the first one um, and that way we just always do the same thing I don't like switching it back and forth that's a great way to make simple easy mistakes okay so on top what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the y why is that because the change to find the change between two things you subtract them so if I say it went from 100 degrees out to 70 degrees out and I say what's the change you're going to go 100 minus 70 okay it's simple as that and you're going to do that in your head naturally. You're not going to think about what you're doing, but you're really you're always doing subtraction. So we're going to take these two values, 9 and 3, because those are our y values. Remember again that the points are x, comma y, and we're going to subtract them. 9 minus 3. Okay? When I do 9 minus 3, I'm going to get 6. Okay? And this could be negative or positive. We're going to keep our negative signs if they are. We don't always take the bigger minus the smaller. We just subtract them in order. Right? One or second one minus first one. Now we're going to look at the bottom, which is the y values, or sorry, the x values. So we're going to take 4 and 2, and we're going to subtract them. 4 minus 2 is 2. Okay, simple as that. The only thing left to do, we don't leave a fraction as 6 over 2. We simplify it if possible, and that gives us 3 over 1. And that's it. That's the only thing we have to do. Okay, that is the more algebraic, more formulaic way of doing it. What we're going to look at next is we're going to look at how to do the same thing, exact same thing, but with graphs. So for those of you that prefer the graph and don't want to have to memorize the rule, we're going to go ahead and look at that. However, I, don't, I do want you to remember, it's not a formula I want you to worry about. It's thinking about change. How did y change? How did x change? Okay, That's really the big deal because that's what slope means. Slope is how much something changes, how much up for every amount over. So if something changes 100, oh man, that sounds like a lot. But if it's 100 and 100, it's really an even change. It's changing the same amount. If it's 100 over 2, that's going way more up than it is over. So it's not just the numbers, it's how much it changes compared to each other. Okay, so we're going to look at the exact same problem. Okay, and we're going to do it with a graph. So on the same paper, you have a blank graph, so you're going to have to do this part with me completely. So first thing we're going to do is plot these two points. So take a second and plot 2 comma 3 and 4 comma 9. I'll do the first one with you. So we're going to start with this, 2 comma 3, which is right there. Remember, 2, 3 means over 2, up 3. Okay, now we're going to plot 4 comma 9, which means over 4, up 9. Okay, so those are our two points. What we're going to do is we're basically going to make a slope triangle. But if you remember when we looked at lines, the first thing we want to think, is that going to be a positive or negative line if I draw a line through it? If you have to, draw a line through it if that helps you. Or draw a connecting line segment that, for those two pieces. We're just trying to figure out what's the slope. So really, if you think about it, that's going to go up to the right. So it is a positive answer. Okay, and I know that the graph pretty much takes up all your space. So you could write it to the right of it on the notes. Or if there's space on the left, you can kind of put it there. What we're trying to look at is how to two different ways to find the same piece of information. So you can pick whichever one works better for you. All right. Now to figure out what the actual slope is, we're going to basically look at the change and the change. So we're going to start with y. How much did that change? And I can literally just count. Okay, if I count, it went from 3 to 9, which is a change of 6. That means on the top of my fraction, I get a 6. If you remember from before, that's what we ended up with with our formula. Now we're going to look at the distance from 4 to 2, which is a distance of... 2, and again I can count it. Okay, that means a 2 goes on the bottom. Just like before, 
we don't leave our fraction as 6 over 2. We're going to simplify it so that it ends up being 3 over 1. And I'm keeping the positive sign there. You can drop the positive sign off at this point, but I want you to be thinking about always positive or negative, positive or negative. And that's all there is to it. Those are the two methods. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try a couple of examples on our own. And what I want you guys to do is just do the one method first. So you can see if you get it right, then we'll move to the second method. The good thing for you guys is you know the answer should be the same. Okay, so here's our second set. So go ahead and fill those in. I want you to find the slope between those two points. So pause the video while you try it. Go ahead and remember second minus first, second minus first. Okay guys, so we're going to have 10 minus 2. That's going to go on top. Okay, which 10 minus 2 is 8. Then we're going to have negative 4 minus negative 2. Be very careful when you have a minus minus like this. If you have two minuses, what you need to do is remember that minusing a minus turns into a plus. So you end up with negative 4 plus 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. And we simplify that one last time and get negative 4 over 1, or the negative of 4 over 1. Okay, now we're going to do the same exact problem using the graphing method. And remember, we should we already know our slope is negative 4. So go ahead and pause it. Try to go through those steps. Plot your points. Go through each piece. Okay, first thing, should have plotted this point right here. And then this point right here. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to decide, is it positive or negative? This one ends up being negative. So if you forgot that, make sure you throw the negative sign on there. But remember, we could compare it to the previous example. Now we're going to make our slope triangle. It goes up 8 and over 2. Okay, so 8 over 2 simplifies out to negative 4 over 1. Now you may think, hey, wait a second, I went to the left first and then I went up 8. It doesn't matter. Okay, rise is rise and run is run. It's just a matter of making sure the line is a negative line or a positive line before you even worry about that. So you don't have to worry about which way you move. Left and right are the same, up and down are the same. Okay, so you're going to try this one now. Um, go ahead and pause the video, give it a try. Again, we're using the formula on this. All right, so starting off, we're going to be subtracting 7 minus 8, which is negative 1. Okay, and a lot of you might say, oh, well, can I just go 8 minus 7? It's easier. Again, you can, but my rule is always do second minus first so you don't get confused. Because what will happen is somebody will go 8 minus 7, then they'll go 4 minus 10. And if you go back and forth like that, your answer will be incorrect. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go 4 minus 10, which gives us negative 6. Now negative over negative actually turns into a positive, so it ends up equaling positive 1 over 6. Okay, last thing we're going to do, we know our answer is going to be 1 over 6. Plot these two points, try to do the whole slope triangle thing, and make sure you get 1 over 6. Alrighty, the first point we're going to plot is 10 comma 8, and then we're going to plot 4 comma 7. Make sure those two are plotted correctly. We're going to decide, is this going to be positive or negative? If you need to, draw the line in there. Okay, But the idea is it goes up to the right. Since it goes up to the right, that is a positive. Okay, Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to count our slope triangle. Okay, Going left to up and down first, it only goes up 1. Going left to right, it goes 6. And you end up with a slope of 1 over 6. Since there's no simplifying to do, that means we're done. Um, what you can see in looking at this is in, in doing the um, the actual like formula when we did the subtraction and everything, you'll notice that what happened was we had to deal with those double negatives. This way we didn't. Other times, you know, you have, it have it's easier to do with the formula. So I would ask you to know both methods because they're both pretty simple and they both are pre-algebra concepts. So we're going to need this for what goes forward. So make sure you watch it. Um, obviously, you've already watched it at this point. Make sure you do the like five practice problems I put before in a little quiz for you guys just because I'm not going to do a bunch of work on this one. Uh, we're not going to spend a ton of class time on it. I want to make sure you really get it before we come into class on Monday so we can move on to the next thing, which is writing the equation of a line given just two points. Thanks for watching. See you guys soon.